Hey, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Birgit Koopsen and I uh, want to welcome you to today's class. I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts and um, on behalf of Jelly Arts, I want to thank Michaels for giving us this opportunity. Um, so today um, the class is going to be about printing, gel printing with um, thread, rope and yarn. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can, uh, with these simple items, you can make really nice organic uh, layered prints that you can use for all kinds of projects like um, card making, um, art journaling and mixed media projects. So um, let's just switch to my hands and I will uh, show you what we are going to do today. Um, I'm just going to uh, close the chat so I can actually see what I'm doing. So um, I'm working today with my five by seven inch Jelly Arts gel printing plate and um, I'm going to get it out of the um, packaging now and as you can see I have my plate stored between two sheets of copier paper. Uh, when you buy the gel plate, it will be between two um, plastic sheets like uh, acetate sheets. It's better not to um, store your plate between the sheets once you've uh, taken the sheets off because then you might uh, get air bubbles between the plastic sheet and the gel plate and the air bubbles um, create pressure and might um, make an impression in your in your gel plate, which you could um, then see in your, uh, in your prints and you don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gel plate on um, a sheet of cardstock or heavy car um, copier paper. And I'm going to secure my uh, cardstock to my uh, workspace so um, it will not move around when I'm printing. So I'm just going to put some masking tape to keep my gel plate in place. Okay, there we go. Today I'm going to print on um, cardstock, white cardstock from Michaels and I'm using the um, four and a half by six and a half inch uh, sheets and the bookmarks, the two by six inch bookmarks. The um, cardstock sheets are, uh, as it says on the packaging, uh, 65 LB, which is nice, sturdy uh, cardstock. The bookmarks are even, it doesn't say how heavy they are, but they feel uh, even a little bit heavier. I would say maybe 90. 90 LBS probably. And uh, what I really like about this paper is that it's very, very smooth. It has uh, no texture at all, which allows you to make really nice, crisp, uh, thin layers of uh, print, really thin layers of paint on this surface, which is really nice. Um, we're going to print with thread yarn and rope and um, so let me show you what I have here. I have just some um, sewing thread and this this one is one of my favorite to uh, use for this technique because it's so thin and um, this will actually show you how um, how how well you can print the details with the gel plate. You get the, the finest lines you will uh, see in your print. Uh, so even a thread as thin as this and even a hair will show up in your, in your prints and you can do amazing uh, stuff with it. Then I'm also going to print with a little bit uh, thicker uh, rope. Like this is, I think it's called a meat, meat binding rope or something like that. Um, it's used by butchers, butchers, I think. And then I have some uh, 
couple of different uh, knitting yarn. So you can look for a yarn that has a specific texture that has something special, which will also show up in your prints. Uh, I have a couple of different ones here. Here's one that has uh, thicker areas and thinner areas, and that will definitely really show in your print. Then I have a little piece here. I think it's called eyelash yarn. Yeah, I think it's called eye eyelash yarn. So you can imagine that uh, all these little eyelashes will show up in the print, which is really fun. And I have some uh, hemp rope, which I, which you can use like the thinner one, for instance, to print as it is. But I will also at some point just totally unravel this. And then we get these like really, really thin um, pieces of hemp rope, uh, which will give you almost like a marble uh, effect on the on the gel plate. But let's just start with making um, a couple of backgrounds because I like to print on um, sheets of paper that have some color already on them. So I'm just going to uh, add some um, bright colors to my plate, not too dark because I want to build up layers and um, it's always easier to uh, print um, a darker layer on top of uh, a lighter layer. Although I will do the opposite also today. So I'm just going to roll out my paint. And when I roll out the paint, I uh, kind of pick up my brayer and put it down again instead of just doing this, because if you start doing this um, when you just put your paint on the plate, then your paint will not go all around your brayer and not spread evenly on the, on the gel plate. So you should just lift it up, put it down again, and so on until your paint is all around your brayer. Um, I'm using today my Speedball soft rubber brayer which is also available at Michael's. And I, I really like this um, brayer because it's um, the soft rubber is spreading very uh, evenly without like sliding over the paint. So that's why I really like it. The paint I'm using is today is Liquitex uh, Basic and Winsor & Newton Galleria Acrylic. And these two brands I'm using today in different uh, color variations. So I'm going to start with a couple of these bookmarks and I'm just going to put them on the plate. I just want some color, some background color. So nothing really exciting or important yet, just adding some color to my bookmarks. And I'm just going to create a couple. So when I start printing with my yarn and my rope, I can just pick, ooh, that paint right already. We had a really hot day today here in the Netherlands, um, hotter than we are normally used to. So that's probably why my paint is drying so fast, or maybe I'm just talking too much. I don't know. Waiting too long. I will just add another layer on top. I do like the texture though. This should work. And there we go, that's better. So I have some backgrounds already here. I will also, um, do a background on a little bit larger sheet. And I'm just going to add another color without cleaning my plate because I really like um, leftover paint showing up in the next print. So if I add a thin layer of paint, um, it will also pick up when I pull my print, it will also pick up the dry paint underneath which should happen now. 
So this layer has to be really thin, otherwise it's not lifting the dry layer. But uh, since it's, it's this warm, I have to be careful not to make it too thin because then it's again not lifting at all. So I'll just have to find the right amount of paint for this specific time. Um, that's also good for you to know that it might, um, the, the paint on your plate might um, react differently um, due to the circumstances in your room. So if it's really hot outside and really dry, it will, uh, your paint will dry very quickly. And if it's more, uh, there's more humidity, it will uh, stay wet longer. Um, if you are in winter and you're having, um, your heater on it will probably also dry faster than uh, when you have when you don't have it on so usually in the first two prints you make you will um, realize how much paint you need for your uh, for the next prints to have the right amount so it doesn't dry too fast um, I want something a little bit brighter so I'm going to do some orange with a bright yellow, and just so I have something to pick from. And I don't have to make backgrounds in between printing with the, the thread and the yarn. So I really like these um, bookmarks. So I'm going to do a couple more of those. And while I'm making this back, these backgrounds, are there any um, questions that I can answer while I'm doing this? Because this so, is not... So, Birgit, I think we're good with the questions um, with because we've been able to put all the links in. But somebody did ask about what the plate is made of. So maybe can you just show them the side of it and that it's squishy? Yeah, so it's uh, like a polymer, I don't know if I pronounced that right, but polymer uh, plate with mineral oil and it's like very uh, flexible, it's almost like a gelatin. Um, so that's, uh, it's often called a gelatin plate, although it's not gelatin. And um, so it's very flexible and it's made basically to release any product you put on top which enables you to do uh, mono printing without a press. So you can put, uh, today I'm working with um, acrylic paint, but you can uh, use a variety of products like um, stamping inks, alcohol inks, uh, different kinds of paint, gouache, um, all kinds of products you can put on the plate and it's, it's made to release all those products so you can as long as everything is wet you can just uh, pick it up uh, straight away from the plate with your paper and when it's dry you can add an extra layer of paint and the extra layer of paint will then also pick up the uh, the dried layer on the gel plate two quick questions one is do you clean your brayer in between colors oh. Yeah, so you don't see it, but I have my cleaning paper here on the side and between colors, I just roll off most of the paint. Um, usually I don't clean my brayer, um, like really clean it in one uh, session. And usually I don't even clean it between um, two or three sessions. It's only when my brayer, I have one here, probably that's a little bit dirtier. I, and you can see here on the brayer that it has like a really th thick layer of paint piled up. So I can just put this uh, overnight in water. And I think you have in the US, you have something called uh, Murphy's oil or yeah. something. And here in the Netherlands, we have uh, um, washing detergent powder that's called biotex and you can put it in there like overnight and then the next day you can just peel off um, you can peel off the acrylic paint and your brain will be as new but um, in, yeah all right one last one somebody's asking can you lightly mist the acrylic paint in between 
uh, working to keep it from drying out. So maybe you can talk about that. I'm, I'm sorry. Um... So they're talking about, can you uh, lightly mist the acrylic paint while working to keep it from drying out? Uh, I, I suppose you could. Uh, I don't, I never do it because I think it's too much of a hassle um, going around with the spray can and spray it and everything. If I really want my paint to um, stay wet longer, if I really uh, need more working time, I will probably add a little bit of a, um, a retarder, a slow dry medium, something like that. Uh, so my paint stays wet uh, a little bit longer. Okay, so the last one now is people want you to talk about the difference between a soft rubber brayer and a hard rubber brayer. And do you have a preference? Well, uh, yeah, there is a difference. And uh, I don't know um, what the difference is in the way that uh, one is specific for a certain uh, use and the one the other one is for another use I think the hard rubber brayer is for more for like um, mono printing ink or something um, I'm, I don't know you can use both you could even use like uh, the plexiglass brayer because I think um, speedball has three different ones uh, what I really like about the soft rubber is that it's not um, if you have a little bit too much paint on your plate Sometimes if you have a hard rubber brayer, it like kind of like slides over the paint and it's not uh, spreading the paint, but it's like, I don't, I don't know the English word for it, but it's like, it's too slippery, kind of, yes. like slippery. Mm -hmm. And um, it, that happens less with the rubber brayer. So for that uh, reason, I would probably um, prefer the rubber one, but it's, it's really very personal. So you could, you could totally love the hard rubber one uh, while I'm loving the, the soft rubber one. It's something you should either try or just go with whatever you have because they all work. Okay, so let's do some printing on, on top of these um, cards, these bookmarks. Let me see. Um, so I want some contrast because I really want to see the lines of the yarn and the thread that I'm uh, going to use. So on this one, I'm going to print with a darker, um, and a bit complementary color. Let me see what I can find. I would like, I would like some kind of purple, but I don't have purple, so I'm just going to mix. And this is, uh, oh, this is I can't pronounce this, Quina Cridon Magenta. Ah, that's probably how it's pronounced. I don't know, but um. It's a magenta and it's a pretty one. And this one is my favorite um, blue. It's a Prussian blue U. And as you can see, I'm totally mixing and matching my uh, Winsor & Newton and um, Liquitex Basics uh, paints. You can, uh, they're both uh, soft body acrylic paints and you can um, just use them together and mix them. So the, Magenta is a very translucent color and it's totally uh, getting lost in the in the mix with the blue, but it I think it's going to be actually a pretty purple color. So here I have some thread that I had uh, left over this afternoon when I was um, machine stitching something. And I'm going just going to use these leftovers and put them on the plate and I realized that I have to work maybe a little bit faster because it's so warm. So I'm not going to think too much about where I put where I put the, the thread. Let's just see what happens. And I'm just going to put 
one here and let's also try the blue one and see the difference. So I'm just going to wrap this and um, I have to say I might do a couple of prints later also on the um, thinner copier paper because when you work with the thicker thread you really need to kind of push the paper down to the plate so you actually touch the plate all around um, the thread and that's easier to do with um, with thinner with thinner paper but this already looks pretty cool don't you think and um, this one too and this is really simple so this is just just one layer uh, on top of another layer and actually I don't really like how this color turned out on the on the orange I wish I had used a little bit more of the magenta instead of the of the blue but this is a really I think this is really nice color combination but the fun thing now is that you also have this uh, like leftover here the paint that was um, on the edges of the thread and I wasn't able to push my paper in there like really to the edges of the thread that's what's leaving behind on the plate and you can totally pick that up with a new layer of paint and create um, also a really interesting and really fun print and for this print I'm actually going to use uh, a bookmark that has no paint on it yet because this is already dry and when you have paint that's already dry on your plate you need a new layer of paint to be able to pick it up so um, I can choose now whatever color I want to use to pick this up and so I can just print on white paper because the color that I'm going to use to pick this up is going to totally cover cover the white. So I'm going to add a little bit of rose pink. Um, and let me do two bookmarks because I have enough there. I'm using a rose pink and what else should I do? Mm -hmm. Let me see a little bit of permanent rose, a rose and a rose. I think that's a nice combination. So this layer has to be really thin uh, because if I have a thick layer of paint and I put my paper on there, the paper will only pick up the top layer of the paint and not the dry, dry uh, paint that's underneath on the plate. So I have to make sure that I really roll out this paint and have a really thin layer. So if I have too much paint, it's better to just roll off my brayer on my cleaning paper to make sure that I get this really thin layer. Now I'm going to put my bookmarks down and again, wrap the paper. And then hopefully I had the right amount of paint to pick up the dried paint underneath. And that looks really promising. So let's see, there we go. And uh, I don't know, I don't see a really, my um, screen is not very sharp. And I don't know if you can see it really sharp, but. Um, so this side had only a little bit left and I would totally just print something else on top here um, to finish it. But I really like the details here. I hope you can see how beautiful they are. 
So let's print something else simply on top of this one to make it uh, a bit prettier. So you can totally um, only print uh, or only cover part of your plate or just uh, only place part of your paper down on the plate. So you don't have to print on the whole piece of paper in one go. You can also build it up. So let's add, that's not really the right color because it will probably not really show up uh, on here, but let, let's just see what happens. I'm going to use that um, eyelash thread. I'm just going to put it down here. This is really not going to show, I'm sure. So I'm going to print it on here, I think. First layer on this one. And again, I'm going to wrap firmly. And this is already a thicker thread. So I have to make sure I push it really down because otherwise I will have bigger open areas in my print because the paper didn't touch the, um, the plate. So I have to make sure I push it really hard down and now I can just remove that thread and look at this. Doesn't that look nice? It's so organic, the, the shapes that you cr can create with, um, with this kind of um, products. So I can just keep building up on this and I will. Let's see, um, let's do another color. Now let's take uh, a deep turquoise. Yes. Birgit, Was there a question? Birgit, yes. Somebody just asked, um, they get the lines when they're rolling. And I know you covered this earlier, but maybe you could show them your rolling trick so, to minimize the lines. Yeah, well, basically, uh, you don't put, you should not put any pressure on your uh, brayer. So I could actually kind of hold it like this and um, brayer out the, the paint like this. So you don't get any lines, you get a really nice, uh, smooth and even a layer of paint. Um, that is if your brayer is clean, but if you have a, a dirty brayer, like the one I showed before, where I had this like this edge here with uh, where the paint has built up, then um, that might also cause the lines in your uh, in your paint because it's a thicker, the brayer is thicker at that end than it is in the middle, which will then cause the, um, um, the lines in your paint. So I'm just very randomly now going to pick up areas on my different bookmarks. Oops. Like this, I can just build up, keep building up layers. I, I hope your um, everything is sharp because my, my um, view is definitely not sharp, but I don't think I can do anything about that. There we go. This is really nice. So you can uh, see, still see a little bit of the lines of my first print showing through and then the second print on top. And then I can continue building this up. As you can see here, something beautiful stayed behind. I'm just going to make the same, do the same here, I think, because I want to pick that up. So you might even, it depends on your personal uh, preference, but um, 
my preference is the prints that uh, I can make with the leftover paint on my plate. So I like the prints that I can create with this dry paint better than, um, than the first prints, but that is of course um, very personal. So you might actually really prefer these prints over these ones. But let's pick this up and then I can show you how pretty it is. Um, let me see, I'm going to do, I'm just going to take some white, I think actually, if I have some, here it is. So Birgit, somebody just asked that they've been trying to do the pickup with the white paint, but it keeps failing. So maybe you can just talk about all the reasons why. Um, well, one of the uh, most obvious reasons is um, when you can't, can't pick up the dry paint is that um, you have too much, you use too much paint for your pickup layer. So here I can already see I have way too much paint on my plate. So I'm just going to spread this and then um, use my cleanup paper to roll off all the excess paint. I should actually almost see um, the image on the plate shining through my, uh, my paint. So this layer has to be really, really thin. Now you can already see the lines that are dried on the plate. So that could be one reason. The other reason could be that you um, are not quick enough and your second layer already dried before you put the paper on. That might also be a, um, a reason. So if the paint is already dry when you put your paper on, then you probably will have no paint at all or hardly any paint on your on your print. Um, if you do have paint on your print, but the image is still on the plate, then you use too much paint because then you're only picking up the top layer. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I really like these uh, organic shapes of the thread. That's my favorites. Um, let me see, let me try. I'm going to show you the um, different types of uh, yarn I have here. So you can see that you can actually uh, see the texture of the different types of yarn. And um, I'm just going to continue printing on this one because this is not finished yet. Let's do um, this. So this is a really nice color, the permanent rose, but it's very translucent and um, it will probably not really uh, create a nice color on top of the green because it's so translucent. So I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. So it will, the, the color will change a little, but um, it will also turn opaque, which will probably give a nicer print on top of the, on top of the green. So I'm just going to mix, mix the color. And you can hear that I'm lifting up my brayer the whole time and putting it down again. So I get a nice and even uh, layer of paint everywhere. So I'm just going to make some lines. I'm just going to place my yarn like this. And let's also do the one with the, with the fun texture here. going just from the right to the left and back. And then I have another one here. Now this would probably work better with thinner paper because the, uh, the yarn is so thick 
but I'm just going to do it anyway. And I'm going to print on the whole, on the whole page and just see what happens. I, I mean, that's what I really enjoy about uh, gel printing is that you can never predict, predict what is coming, what will come out and uh, you can just keep building layers. And um, if you don't like the outcome, just add a new layer. And at some point, you probably will like your print. You just have to continue printing. You cannot say after only two prints, two layers, uh, I don't like this print because if you have done only two or three layers, then it's just not finished yet. Okay, here we go. So this is what I meant with uh, when you use thinner paper, you can push the paper down better. And you can see here um, around the edges of the yarn that there is still a really thick edge of uh, paint left. And that's because I couldn't push my paper down enough to tape away um, the paint there, which gives these like really wide uh, open areas. It doesn't mean that it's not nice, but it's um, not what I was aiming for because this doesn't really show that I used um, yarn here. So I'm just going to remove this from the plate and see if there's then maybe at least a nice pattern left on the plate. This could actually become something pretty. Um, I think I have to turn down the volume on my phone. Um, let me see. I'm just going to use uh, one of these again, and then I'm going to use the hemp rope because that's my favorite of all. What color should I use on top of this? This is still wet. Maybe I can even, maybe I can even still get some out of it. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So this also shows that um, I don't, I don't have like perfect prints all the time. Some people think that I have perfect prints all the time and nothing ever goes wrong. And that I know exactly um, what is going to happen when I put my uh, paper on top of the paint and that I already know uh, what the print is going to be like. That's not true. It's um, gel printing is very unpredictable because there are so many um, things that can um, change the outcome. Like for instance, warm weather, uh, paint that dries too fast or not fast enough, paper that's too thick or too thin or too absorbent or not absorbent enough or so many things. So, but that's what I really like about the whole gel printing is that it's that it is so unpredictable and you never know what's going to come out of it. And you just can always keep going and make something pretty out of it, no matter what. But the hemp rope, that's what I want to do now. And I waited uh, to do this as my last step because this is going to be messy. And some people, I've, I've done this uh, several times during workshops and people, um, either hate it or love it. There's no, no in between because it's really messy. And if you don't like mess, you will definitely not like this technique. Um, but I think it's worth, it's worth the mess. So I'm just going to kind of peel the hemp rope into a really thin, layers. No, that's not, not right. Really thin um, threads. So you, I, I don't know if you can see it, but it's almost like a spider web. It's so thin, it's almost like a spider web. So I just will cut off a piece and then just peel it. 
until I have a little pile of really, really thin threads here. And the more you um, separate it, the nicer your prints will be. So uh, you, you should aim for um, not too thick, uh, that it's not too thick what is what is left that it's like you totally make it like a spider web the threads as thin as you can and then they will these little threads will be everywhere especially uh, when you start printing on your gel plate and on your brayer and it will all be a big mess but the prints are so pretty. So it's like a, a marble effect. So now I'm going to, let me see, I'm just going to print on this one because this is not, definitely not a, a finished print. And, uh, but I do like the, the bright colors and I need some bright colors in my first layer and I'm going to add a really dark, I think I will, I would prefer black actually, but I don't know if I have any black. Let me see. I don't think I have any black here. So let's do, um, this, Prussian blue and add some. Oh, I have some black here. This is a uh, deco art premium. I'm just going to mix it with the blue. So I'll probably get like a really, really dark blue, almost black. And I'm spreading it out on my plate and I can already see that some of these little threads are on the plate creating some texture already which is fine the downside is that it will also they will also be all around my brayer later and that's a bit harder to clean, but that's okay. So now I'm just going to spread all these thin threads out of on my plate. And the more I spread them, the better. Okay, I think that's enough. And now I'm just going to put this on top. And some paper. There we go. And now I will, when I lift up my paper, probably and most of the threads will come up with the paper and be stuck to my uh, to my print almost all of them and now I have to peel them off to reveal um, the texture underneath but I have to wait a little bit because when I peel it off now uh, I have to kind of rub it off and then I will totally lose my texture so I can very carefully lift up some of it but the ones that are like really stuck to the paper I have to rub them them off when the um, paint is a little bit more dry so this might this actually comes up quite easily maybe not all of it but I will rub off the, the rest later when the paint is dry and it will reveal even more thinner thinner lines, more detailed lines. So you can see how detailed these prints are that you can make on the, on the Jelly Arch gel plate. Every little 
thread will show every hair. Okay. I'm going to leave this to dry a little bit longer to get the last threads off. So now I still have some threads left behind here on the plate and I, that's totally fine. I will just leave them on. I might even add some extra um, before I add a new layer of paint because I, I can also leave them on. They can get like embedded in the, in the paint. And if they are a little bit darker, maybe because um, your previous print uh, you did with a darker color, then they might might show up in your print um, and create and add extra texture. So I might not even peel them off my my final print. I might just leave them in there because they give some nice extra texture to the print. But let's see. Let's see what happens. There we go. And if some of the threads are um, still a bit loose, like not completely imbe embedded in the paint, then I uh, can also just use some uh, matte medium, for instance, and glue them down. But it looks like uh, everything has been picked up now. And here you can see like all these darker black lines in here are the threads that were left behind of the previous print. And I don't know if I can, if you can see it really well, but it gives a really very organic feel to your prints. So um, let me see if I can rub off a bit more here. Yes, I can. Now that the paint is dry, I can just go over there and I can just rub off this excess, uh, these excess threads. And now you can really see very well all the tiny little details in here. I think that's really pretty, don't you? So this is the hemp rope. It's uh, it looks like this, and it is a bit uh, a bit fuzzy, and you can just um, just totally peel it like this, and you only need like this little bit for one print. And usually you can do actually even you can use this again. I can totally let's see what happens if I. Uh, use a really bright color now. Um, let's also do some orange. And then um, put this back on top. Probably it will also pick up this green line here, which would be nice. So I'm just going to use the same thread again. So if you are quick and you do like two or three prints uh, in a row and you use the same thread again, then this thread uh, might still be uh, have wet paint on it. And the wet paint will then also transfer to the next print. So um, I definitely would recommend using the same uh, thread a couple of times and just see what happens. Just experiment. Um, you can leave it on some of the prints. You can peel it off other, other prints. You can print on uh, white paper and get white lines, or you can print on colored paper and get the, uh, the color of the, of the background, of the first background. So here I printed on uh, white paper. So you can see the, where the threads are. Uh, you get the white background now. But I really like this texture of these threads that are uh, still on here. 
So what I can do now is just um, add a layer of matte medium on top and uh, basically glue them down and leave them in there. And you will not have, not only have like a visual texture, but an actual texture too, which can be really fun for a uh, mixed media project. So let me show you a couple of uh, things you can do um, with these prints. Oh, I have one here that I want to show you because I like it so much. And this is basically what I aimed for in my first print. So this one was made with the sewing thread. This. And I had a yellow pink background and I printed on top with purple, uh, purple bluish. And uh, it actually was a really nice opaque color that that uh, really covered um, the yellow underneath. So you get a really nice contrast. And um, that's what I really like. And that's also what I like about this. Um, this is also a technique that is really, um, you can do really well with, for, with neon colors, like neon pink or neon yellow for a really nice contrast. So I used a couple of my prints to create. Um, so I printed on these bookmark papers, right? So these are the perfect size for a bookmark. And I made a couple. Um, and the only thing I did was, I did some machine stitching, uh, sewing around the edges. And I added um, a sentiment and then uh, some rope or ribbon or yarn. And these make really fun bookmarks. It's also uh, nice to give away and it's really easy to make. And you can make like a whole bunch of them in, a, in about an hour and then you can, you can give them away. Or you could just cut up your prints and then um, glue them or Maybe first you want to do some stitching or not. You can also just glue them straight on a card and add a sentiment. And then you have a really nice card and they do not really need anything else, right? I think the print on itself is um, nice enough. But you can totally use them also as backgrounds for your uh, art journaling or for your mixed media projects. So the cards I have here are also uh, from... Michaels. They are, let's see, they, I have two different sizes. I think these are, it's also the recollections line. And um, so I have this one here. When it's folded, it's um, five by seven, six and a half inch. So it comes in a package like this. It's already scored, so you can just easily fold it. And then there are envelopes too in the package. So you have the cards and on this side, um, the envelopes. And you have the same in the smaller version, which is um, this one. And that's the same. It's already scored, but it's not folded yet. So you can fold it yourself. And then there are also envelopes in the packaging. So everything is in there um, to create some fun cards. Okay. Um, I think that's basically the techniques. And um, let me know if there are any questions. Maybe we can turn the camera so I can, yes, hello. Um, let me see. Um, that goes really fast, the chat. Let me see if there is. Um... <laughs> How did you add the sentiments? Well, there are different ways of doing that. You can uh, like buy sheets with stickers that you can just uh, put on there, but you can also just print them out yourself on, um, on some copier paper and then use uh, uh, a matte medium or um, 
a taper and or whatever to um, just glue them on. It's just glued on. So, yeah. Um, let me see what else. Uh, is there anything, Luann, that I should address right now? Um, I don't think so. I don't hear anything, so probably not. Um, okay, how do we clean the plate? That's, uh, and cleaning the jelly plate. Uh, that's a really good question. So normally I don't clean my plate. I would just leave it as it is. And then uh, the next time I start a gel printing, I will have my plate um, like this with the painted edges, the edges with the paint around it. And they will just, these little leftovers on the plate will just show up in my next print, which I um, really like because I like my prints not to be too clean. Um, but now with all the little threads on it, I will probably uh, clean it because I don't want my these little threads in all of my or in the next couple of prints that I'm uh, doing. So I will just use um, a baby wipe or a wet cloth and some uh, baby oil to clean it. And you could even wash it um, with running water and uh, uh, warm water and some hand soap. And um, let me see. Why do you use your hands and not the brayer to press? That's also a good question. So for some techniques, I actually do use my brayer to press, but because you have these like bulky um, pieces of yarn on your plate and you want to make sure that you get all around the edges of that um, uh, of that that uh, rope and yarn, you really have to push uh, the paper down with your finger. So you actually have to feel where the uh, where the yarn is, so you can um, wrap in the right uh, place. And if you do it with your brayer, you will totally miss that. So I hope that makes uh, sense. Um, okay, I think that's it for um, today. We have, uh, I hope Madison put in the chat uh, when the next Michael's um, Zoom live is. I think it is in uh, two weeks and it will be uh, July 6th, I see, and 20th. And July 6th, it will be Marcia Falk. And um, don't miss it, sign up, and uh, hopefully I will see you again for, for my next Zoom. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.